Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And tonight we are gonna go back in time, like three years in time, to revisit some old footage that I had filmed but never turned into a video. In the summer of 2019, I was filming videos for a collaboration with Knit Crate for Knit Crate's Dive Into Dying, Learning to Die three month subscription. While I was filming, there were some videos that came out okay, but I thought that I would be able to do a better job, do a better example of the technique. So I either refilmed part or all of it. And so this video is one of the ones that I didn't use for that course, but I thought it'd be fun for me to go back and revisit and watch it today. So let's go back in time. Today we are going to dye 100 grams of the Dyer Supplier Superwash MCN. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 15% nylon, and 10% cashmere. We are going to free soak this yarn in some plain tap water at room temperature for 20 to 30 minutes. Ed and Hayne Rebecca popping in to say that it's amusing watching myself try to be concise. A lot of times when I'm filming, I editorialize a lot, like I'm kind of doing right now. Uh, but when I was filming for them, I wanted to try to keep the videos short, succinct, still have some of my personality in it clearly, but I was editing out a lot of my other, like, I don't know, Rebecca-isms that I often throw in. And so, yeah, I'm what, like a minute in? <laughs> and I'm already like, oh, I have more to say. We are gonna pre-soak this yarn in some plain tap water for 20 to 30 minutes. There is no acid in this pre-soak. For today's dyeing project, we are gonna use a one quart mason jar. It's a wide mouth mason jar and it's big enough to fit 100 grams of yarn. And we're gonna be playing with four different colors of Jacquard acid dyes. Uh, brilliant yellow, Aztec gold, gunmetal, and brilliant blue. Uh, the goal is to have yellows, blues, and some greens where these colors mix together on our yarn. Whenever you are using stock solutions, you always want to shake them up really well before using the dye so that way you can mix up and redissolve any particles that might have crashed out. I squeezed out most of the water from our pre-soak really gently. And I'm going to start by placing one end of the yarn in the jar. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our colors, like a bit of the Aztec gold, and we are going to randomly sort of squirt some onto our yarn. Flip that over and I'm just squirting some a little bit of color onto that yarn and letting it go in. And now I am going to take the yellow and a little higher up, I'm gonna squirt some of that yellow onto the yarn so I flip it over, squirt some of that yellow onto the other side, and let more of the yarn go into the jar. So if we take a look at it right now, our yellows are sort of there on the bottom. Now I'm gonna take some of the Jacquard Brilliant Blue, and I am applying it there. And as we're lowering this in, I'm gonna do, oh, that was a little bit more than I meant, but a little bit more of the Aztec gold. Put a little more in. Do a little bit of our yellow. Maybe some more blue there in that section as well. Poke it down. And then I'm going to do some gun metal over here sort of around there, put the top in, add a bit more blue, nice amount of blue on top, with some gunmetal, and a little bit of Aztec gold there in the center. Now, if we take a look at our jar right now, you can see there's a lot of white, we've got some green, but you can see we've got some color at different layers throughout it. So now as we pour on some water with some vinegar, the colors will spread and we'll get some really cool, unique patterns in there. Uh, right here I have four cups of water 
and I'm adding two tablespoons of white vinegar. Now, four cups of water is way too much to fit in the jar, but I like to have the acid pre-mixed so that way I can add it until the jar is full. Now, I'm gonna take our vinegar and water mixture and slowly start adding this liquid to our jar. And you can see that I'm not just pouring it straight through, I'm sort of moving it around different areas, which is letting these colors sort of spread out and blend together, and is also distributing the acid that we will need so that way we can actually set this color. Once you start getting near the top, um, I will keep adding some water and you can see um, that no more is sinking down. But those colors that we have in here have absolutely spread out some and they might still spread out more or they might not. But that is part of the fun with this technique. The kind of color that we get will be somewhat random and fun. I'm going to save some of the what I like to do differently until the end of the video, but there are a couple things that I want to point out now. If I was going to be setting up the yarn in the jar just like this, the biggest change I would do is have some of the water that I pour onto the yarn, that first water, not have acid in it at all. That will help some of these colors spread a little bit more because even though my tap water is slightly acidic, without extra vinegar or citric acid in the water to start with, the colors aren't going to start striking to the yarn as fast and then they can spread out more. The other thing, I probably would have added more dye overall these days, but I think in the last three years, I've certainly evolved a lot with my whole dyeing process. Now I am going to place on the lid um, just so that way it doesn't evaporate and I'm going to carefully take this outside and set it in the sunshine. Now it is time to let the sun do its work and heat up our yarn so we can set these beautiful colors. Even as we see things move or not move around the outside of the jar, what we see on the inside is going to be a complete surprise. And the reveal of the yarn is one of my favorite parts. As the sun moves through the sky, the sunny points in my yard will shift and change. So I will be moving this jar to new locations as needed. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to shake it. I'm going to carefully move it so that way it's really the dyes that are doing the work here today. So I will see you in probably 10 to 12 hours when we will finally get a chance to open this up and look at our yarn. B-roll of location two. About six hours in, we got hit with a major thunderstorm. So my sunny spot is not quite as sunny, but I'm still gonna leave this outside because it's still really hot, even with the pouring rain and thunder. I'm about to open up the jar and immediately wash the yarn. And this is something that I absolutely do different now. You can see a lot of color will absorb, bind to the yarn just from the heat of the sun, the heat outside, and it's possible it's enough, but I like to be overly cautious now and do a steam set for 30 minutes just to make sure that all the pigments are really well bound to the yarn. There are some colored pigments that do require more heat. Uh, and so the as hot as it can get inside a jar on like a 90 degree day is pretty hot, but sometimes you need to pump the temperature up a little higher. So current Rebecca would take the yarn out of the jar, show what it looks like, pop it into a steamer basket, and then wash it. Now, why do solar dyeing at all? Or really any kind of cold process where I set things outside? It helps save time. If I'm gonna go through and dye a lot of yarn, it's a lot faster to steam set things in 30 minute bunches than it would be to have it in a pot or a kettle to dye for longer. So there's a convenience factor here. A thunderstorm meant that our yarn was only in the jar outside for about six hours instead of 10 or 12. And the temperature cooled off considerably, but I have a feeling that 
we still are gonna have absolutely beautiful yarn. It's the moment of truth. And ooh. All right, looking at this, it looks like there's a tiny bit of color left. But most of the color is in our yarn. Let's see if we see any color bleeding here. Funny because I think that the gold at the bottom didn't get the chance to spread out as much since it was already at the bottom. Things don't move up as well as they do down. But so far, all of our color is in the yarn. And we have not peeked at this in any way besides giving it sunlight. Um, you could, if you're seeing some bleeding, you could go from here and steam set it. Um, doing this technique gives you a really wonderful blend, random fun blend of colors on your yarn. And I just added some clear dish soap. But um, the sun with a sufficient time should be sufficient for you to set the color on your yarn like we have here. So I'm now going to go ahead and rinse out the soap, hang up the yarn to dry, and we'll come back with some conclusions. Solar dyeing can be an amazingly random technique. There are so many different ways you can combine the yarn with colors in the jar that you're going to set outside. You could use powders or liquid. All of it can combine and spread out in many different ways, depending on how little or how much acid you have in your container. You could play around with this using more color and then steam set after if you're worried about the colors not being set or you're seeing a lot of bleeding during the washing. Ultimately, it is an extremely fun technique to play around with and it is well suited for having a group of people along to die with you since you're not limited by stove space. You're just limited by mason jars, which you can find more of really easily. I don't know exactly why 2019 me decided to refilm this. My hypothesis is that I wanted a little bit more color coverage on the yarn. I wanted more blending of the colors and I just I think wanted more pigmentation. In September of 2019, I filmed a for my channel, a, film, a solar dyeing in three different ways video. And in there, I think I picked my favorite from that video and went and created the new dive into dyeing video. Uh, in general, I like to do it with powders. And as I said, I save the acid till later. I like getting more oomph when you watch the colors spread out. But also, I mean, I've learned so much more now. I am Rebecca from Cabinets, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I love to explore color and yarn and share things that I considered great successes and things that maybe didn't work out quite as well. This yarn is really, really cute, um, and I am gonna actually list it in the Cabinets Creations Etsy shop. So if you would like to bring home this fun yarn that is a little bit of a blast from the past, uh, I'll have a link to the listing down in the comments below. And of course, if you want to go and watch any of the videos that I filmed for the Dive Into Dyeing course, I do have a playlist here on my channel. Those videos are on the Dyer Supplier YouTube channel, but you can find them in the playlist that I will have linked down below. And if you want to learn more about the Dive Into Dyeing course, you can go learn more about it on Knit Crate's website. I am a Knit Crate affiliate, and so I'll have my link and my coupon code also down in the video description. I do have one more of these videos. Well, maybe it's a video plus a Leave No Dye Behind that I filmed for the project in 2019 that I redid. And actually, that one is one that I reference uh, every so often uh, and why I actually do a lot of crude swatching of colors now. So if you want to see that video, leave a comment and let me know and I'll try to bump it up the editing queue. Thank you so much for watching.